Right, it's time to add JavaScript to our program so that whenever the user actually clicks, then we'll be able to hide and reveal each of these elements. And also, whenever the user clicks on this button as well, they'll be able to see what the other menu options are. So let's dive into it. To start with, we are going to use event bubbling. And for us to use event bubbling, it means that we're going to set our event on the parent element. So we're just going to use the conditional statement to actually query which button is being clicked. And let's see how that works. So let's create our first file. We're just going to say new file, then call it script.js. Okay, so let me just confirm that it's linked. Okay, so we have script.js, which is okay to confirm that it is linked. Let's do alert and just say hello. Let's check. You can see that a program is printing out hello, which means everything is well connected. Let's just leave a comment that says toggle drop down now first thing we need to target is the navbar so we need to target we need to target this wrapper which is we are going to place our event so we can just say const then call it drop down you can call it anything let's use this let's use camel case drop down all right so let's go for our document dot query selector then we want the class of navbar okay so now we have it for us to be sure of what we are getting we can just say console.log Just print this very bar. So let's see each time the user click. This might not really show anything yet, but let's try to see what we will get. We check our console. You can see that you have all the elements that are inside of that parent theme. Okay, cool. So we're sure of what we are getting right now. What we can do now is let's just comment this console. We might need it later. Then let's target something else. Let's target the drop down list. So we can then say const we'll call it drop down list. Then we can just come here and say, just copy the same thing here. But at this time, we want the all, we want to target all the drop down list. In case you want to know what we're targeting specifically, let's just check for it. This is what we are targeting all the drop down list. These are the menu that makes up the sub menu. The next thing we need to do right now is declare our event handler and the event is going to be on this drop down so we can just say drop down add event listener the type of event we want is on the user click then we can throw the event on the e so use the arrow function so whatever we want we can actually do here let's save our event in a variable we can just say const target is equals to event, which is this very event or target. Okay, this is wrong. All right, so now that we have our event saved, we can let's console it again to see what we get each time. 
So let's just say target. Okay. Let's try to check. Each time we click, you can see that you can actually see the element being clicked. You can see that you just click the eye, it works. And if you click explore, you can see it as well. So it makes a lot of sense. So at this point, we are able to actually know which element is being clicked. So we cannot set our condition to match any of the button. But first, let's set the condition for the hamburger menu. So we can say, if target, if target dot id is equals to hamburger menu. Now let me show you what I mean. The hamburger menu is carrying hamburger menu. Oh, something is wrong here. We actually need to reference the hamburger class. Let's just go back to our script and say if target class name is equals to this, we want this event to be triggered. In fact, let's just say we want to alert and just use the word hamburger. So whenever we come and we click on the hamburger menu, you can see that already we have the event on the hamburger menu. But let's actually toggle the open nav. Now, for us to toggle the open nav, let's check what we have in the HTML. For us to be able to target the header nav, let's just even have an ID which is going to be called header nav. Okay, so we can just target this header ID from our JavaScript straight forward. So we can just say header nav, then call the class list, and the toggle we want to give it the open nav class. So the nav that we created in the CSS, we want to give it back to this very position. So we just added the ID so that we can use the ID to target in JavaScript. So we're just saying this should be a smaller letter. So we're just saying header nav. The name must be the same thing with the ID here, header nav. So if we save and refresh here, you can see that it's working and if we click again it toggles out if we click it comes up if we click it toggles out and that's it for the hamburger menu so let's look at the big screen sizes let's see how we can toggle this ones still the same if statement so we're going to say else if this time around we're going to check is the button containing drop down btn so let's look at the button that carries drop down btn okay so we need to add a class here called drop down btn okay just on the explore link so let's use let's set a condition that if we click that very button something should happen so we are just going to say is target class name equals to drop down btn so we want something to happen so let's make sure that we are targeting it and if we check let's try to check our console the checker you can see that we have the drop down in the console so cool so now that we have an idea that this is working what we can then do is to toggle the drop down class that we wrote in css so we are just going to say target dot parent element and let me show you how this work we are targeting this explore okay 
and we want to add the class on the parent element. So this is one parent and this is another parent. So we need to level to the parent element that we want in order to add this drop down. So which means we will use parent element twice, then add the class list, then use the toggle, then we're going to add the drop down. Let's see how that works. You can see that it's working. Nothing is happening here yet because we are yet to add this button btn to the element. Remember we added it to the explore. So let's just copy it and take it to the next explore. Okay. As you can see, if we remove it, we go, if we click, we come back. When we reload our page, the both shouldn't open at once. So let's remove the add coded version in the HTML. So let's just remove this one. Let's remove this one as well. Let's remove this one. Yes. So if we refresh, you can see that they are not there. But you can just click and it works. Okay, so what we can do right now is whenever we click, we want this to spin. One way to do that is to call on the rotate class we declare in the CSS. So we can then say target. In fact, let's just copy this one. Let's copy everything. We're just going to adjust it a bit. But instead of these, we're just going to say children. Then position of one, then toggle rotate. Let me show you what I'm trying to do here. If you check what we have here, you will see that the parent is actually this drop down link. Then we now say when we get to the parent, the children of the parent, but pick the second one. Remember, it's from the index of zero. So you have zero and one. So we took the parent then selected all the children and then select the image which is number one let's go back after we have this everything should spin you can see the spinning happening okay so this work for us the next thing we want to be able to do is whenever you click anything else like when you click outside this thing should be hidden so we can say if else if again let's set another condition else if but this time around we are saying if target period class name is not equals to drop down btn if it's not if what we are clicking is not the btn then we remove the drop down class for us to do that we can run the for loop you can say for loop let's use i as the index so let's take the drop down list we want to remove all the drop down class but what we can do here is to say drop down list then we want the class name or class list being removed what we are removing is the drop down we save it and we click we click anywhere else click anywhere nothing is happening yet and let's see why so it seems we are targeting the wrong element here. Let's check what we should target. Okay, so we should be targeting this primary link instead. So we're just going to say primary link. And if we save it and run it, if we click anywhere, it's going to disable it. 
need to check on the mobile. We still have are not working perfectly. Check on the web. It worked pretty well. One more thing we need to add, you can see we need a pointer instead of these editing codes that we see here. So let's just add let's add it in our CSS. To add it in our CSS, let's just target the button. So let's have it here. And just say Nagra. Then drop down TM and just say cursor to the pointer. And if you come here, you can see that you have the pointer. And also, if you click, it works. And if you check, it's work. And that's how we wrap it up for this lesson. Why not just take these projects forward and add further functionality? Let me show you what I'm missing. If you click and you click again, it works. But what if you click and you click the second one, they both show. Ideally, the previous one should be toggled off while the target preview. So I would encourage you to add your own function with JavaScript just to hide these whenever this current element is toggled so what i'm saying is when you toggle this just like the way if you toggle outside or you toggle any of the elements and it toggles off you just find how to add a script to this so that the two elements will not be open at the same time and if you come up with any solution just kindly drop your comments and if you're able to figure out a solution on how to do that hit me up with the comments and i'll be willing to see how you did it Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.